And what is up, guys? It's your Average Gear Reviewer here, back with another quick little unboxing for you. In this one, we're taking a look at a CRKT knife. And this is one of those cases where, have you guys ever seen something cool on a site? Uh, you know, it doesn't really matter where it is, Amazon, on a, you know, SMKW, DLT Trading, one of these places that you see it, and it just kind of catches your eye. And you go, that's kind of cool. Um, if you guys have watched any of my recent videos, you know that I've really been into uh, sort of the concept of uh, sidearm retention knives and just really small minimalist knives for EDC carry and getting more a little more into fixed blades, I have to admit. Uh, well, today I'm taking a look at this one. It's the CRKT SDN. And let me tell you guys, for such a small knife, this knife is actually very complicated. Let's get into it. Welcome to Average Gear Review, where the best gear is the gear you have on. And y'all don't let me forget, welcome to the channel, welcome back to the channel. If this is your first video, thanks so much for stopping by. I really appreciate you stopping by to watch one of my little videos. It really does mean a lot to me. I appreciate you so much. If you're a returning viewer, it's so good to see you again. I hope you and yours are doing well. Um, without further ado, let's take a look at this CRKT. We're here, back over here at the good old top down view. And uh, this this is how this box came to me. So it, it's not uh, it's not secured or anything. It was in a box from Amazon, but I didn't figure you guys cared to watch me open that. So um, looks like it does come with a lanyard here. Because this is supposed to be a neck knife. If you didn't read the title, this is the CRKT SDN, uh, designed by James Williams. He's uh, designed quite a few knives for CRKT. And um, this one really does have an interesting name. And uh, the, the uh, applications for it uh, are, are about as interesting as the name is. But it is the CRKT SDN is what it's called. Got a uh, nice flat bead blasted finish, it looks like here. Um, comes in a good Kydex sheath. Let's go ahead and pop it out of there. So it does fit snugly into the sheath there. Looks like it might be rubbing just a little. Let me clean this blade up. It's got a little bit of oil on it there. Nobody wants to see the oil. But he just wants to see the pretty side. Nobody wants to see the ugly side. How's everybody doing today? You guys doing good? Comment down below. Let me know how your day is going. So yeah, CRKT SDN. The name of this is is super interesting, and I, I actually watched a video about uh, Mr. Williams talking about his design process with the knife, and and what he what he envisioned for it. And it's really, really super interesting. And I, and I thought it was just a, uh, a little small, like, sidearm retention knife, sort of like the uh, SOCP dagger or something to that vein. But um, watching the video, it's meant to be held with this in the palm of your hand. And, and you use that, he said, to punch out. And this is supposed to press into your hand back here. And then it's got really good jimping on the back of the blade too. So you see it's got really wide jimping there. Um, it's a very narrow C there. How it comes down to a really, really narrow edge. Very narrow edge to that. Um, but yeah, let's get into some of the specifications on it here. So let's clear some of this stuff out of the way here. And this knife is meant to be worn around the neck, um, but I kind of like the pocket clip. I kind of prefer the pocket clip. Um, but that's just a personal preference, really, on my part. Um, it does fit really, really securely into that sheath. That's one thing. It is not going to come out of there by accident. But anyway, let's get into uh, some of the particulars on the knife. So you have a, it says 2.65. It's just a little over... You have right at two and a half inches as far as cutting surface. Now the blade itself probably is 2.65 inches long. 
Um, and then the handle is going to be, it's kind of hard to determine where the handle <laughs> is and where it isn't, uh, especially because on the top, it's a little different, but, uh, let's say two and a half to five. So about a three inch handle. It's a very, very short knife overall, just a little over six inches long. Um, looks like your blades little over an inch wide, maybe an inch and an eighth, but very, very narrow. Um, it's a 0.13 millimeter thickness to it. So very, very thin, slicey blade. And there is a reason for that. According to James Williams, the one who designed the knife, it's meant to be very, very slicey. Um, and then the uh, 4116 stainless steel, I believe he chose that because it's really durable. It will resist rust, but it's also easy to sharpen. It holds an edge well, and um, it's very easy to clean. So it's a very simple design, just a bead-blasted stainless steel. Nothing extra to it. There are several different ways you can hold it. I've found you can slip your fingers through it like this. And there are several different ways that you can hold it, according to James Williams, the one who designed it. And um, one of the main ways that it showed, I watched a video about him talking about this knife and he was saying that it's meant to fit into the palm of your hand and you hold it like this and you use it in a, sort of a punching manner. Uh, but uh, he was also showing, you know, you can hold it several different ways. If you're using it for cutting, you can hold it like this. Uh, you know, and it does also, it will slip up over your first three fingers and then it's a very secure grip for like a small arm retention knife type thing where you could still grip. Um, not necessarily it would work so well that way. Um, but if you had it on this hand, you could still grip, say, a pistol with this because it'll just stay on your hand. You know, you don't have to try to retain it. it it'll just stay there fairly well. Now, I don't know how well that would be for um, punching this way. It seems like that might impact your finger, but that's really not the primary way it's meant to be held, according to him. And that kind of surprised me when I first looked at it because it seems like naturally it does just slip over those first three fingers like that. Uh, and if you're familiar with the, the small arm retention dagger type knives, a lot of them have a um, pinky ring on them and they feel kind of the same way. They just, you slip them on and they kind of just stay there. Um, it reminds me a little bit of the cold steel double edge neck knife. Um, I'm going to take a look at a couple of different knives with this here in a minute and uh, get kind of a little bit of size comparison, you know, just for a little perspective on it. Um, we'll take a look at that. Uh, before that, I did want to get into the name of the knife. So it's called the SDN and uh, SDN with my Southern accent there. It might have sounded like N. <laughs> um, but the uh, SDN, what it stands for is the Skein Do Neck. So it was designed to be worn around the neck as a neck knife um, and just really as minimalist, minimal as possible but uh, as much utility as possible packed into that small amount of space. And, um, but yeah, and if you're not familiar with the skein do, uh, a skein do is a old Gaelic um, and Scottish, I believe um, it was a sort of backup dagger. It was a very small concealed dagger that you would use. And it was sort of like a last ditch knife. In other words, is, is sort of what it was. Um, and so this was designed with that concept in mind as something small, um, very easy to conceal, um, but still maximizing on the utility. You know, the blade shape he chose because it maximized the cutting edge for the surface area. And it was just like really interesting how much thought went into this. Um, he, it said, he said in the video that he even took it um, to some special forces units and asked them if they could use it as a field scalpel. And they said um, after reviewing it, use, using it a little bit, taking a look at it or whatever, that they said it would absolutely do everything they needed to do as far as field surgery. So this knife was designed to basically maximize the utility in as small compact a space as possible and it's just that's such a interesting concept to me 
I really, really, I really, really like that. It, it's so interesting to see that line of thinking just carried out like to the extreme, you know, bare bones handle, no handle materials, no even real separation between the blade and the handle. You know, it's just all one continuous piece of steel. Um, just very, very, very interesting concept for a knife to me. Let me know what you guys think about it down below. What, do you, what are your thoughts on the uh, smaller EDC fixed blade type of knives? And I guess this would even be uh, sort of like an emergency type of knife. But yeah, that was his idea with the design. He wanted to, to design something that could be used as a self-defense weapon. It'd be as small and compact as possible so you could have it on you and not really even notice it. It could be used, you know, like I said, as a self-defense weapon. It could also be used as um, a skinny knife so you can get really good up here so you could skin with it. And also he made it as slim and as slicey as possible so that it will easily slice through materials um, and that would apply to the self-defense application of slicing or also the um, field surgery aspect of having to cut into, you know, um, tissues. So, yeah, really, really super interesting knife to me. I, I don't know if you guys are really into these types of knives, but uh, I, I kind of dig these types of knives. Um, I want to compare it to another CRKT that I've got here. Um, this is the Foltz Minimalist Cleaver design. Has a real similar, uh, has a real similar sheath with it, and you can see it's it's uh, even a little bit smaller than this. But uh, these have that sort of three finger groove design to them that uh, feels really nice in your hand. And then the lanyard actually kind of works as uh, your pinky control there. So, um, yeah. But you can kind of get an idea of the size of it there. I don't have one of these clip points or drop points like this knife. I don't have one of those in that design, so it's kind of hard to compare it. Um, I've got my little unboxing buddy here, the Demco Armager 2. You can tell it's dirty because it's eaten a lot of tape. Um, not really the same type of knife, but it gives you an idea of, uh, you know, sort of the size of it there. Um, and uh, let's see. I wanted to compare it to the uh, Benchmade SOCP. This is not an actual SOCP. This is a knockoff. But, you know, like I was saying before with the uh, small arm retention knives, a lot of them have the grooving here that fits right into your fingers and then the ring here for retention, which I I'm really a big fan of that. Obviously, if you guys have seen, um, if you've seen the knife that I've been working on lately, the uh, White Horse Concept, you know, you can see that. Um, it's very similar. Uh, it kind of shares a little bit of design similarities with all of these. It has a little bit of minimalist finger grooving. It is small and compact. Um, it's got a good Kydex sheath for it with an ulti clip on there, actually. Um, it doesn't have the blade width, so it's not going to be as good as at slicing through thicker materials like this is. Um, but it's very good for puncturing. Um, and, you know, probably none of them are going to slice like this uh, cleaver will. So uh, let's do a couple of cut tests with it and uh, see how it how it performs. See, I know I got. Got a piece of post-it paper right here, so. It is grabbing a little, but it tends to just kind of slice clean through. I think the paper may be folding a little bit on me here. But yeah, it'll it'll make confetti, right? <laughs> it'll make some confetti. It will uh, cut. Just uh, sort of a little bit of an inconsistent cut there. And, and like I said, I don't know if that's the grind, maybe. Uh, maybe a slight imperfection in the blade there. But um, yeah. That's my, uh, that's pretty much all I got for you guys. I, I don't think I did mention one really important thing about this. It, it weighs in, the knife itself weighs in at 1.3 ounces. So, I mean, it is just, it's, it's light as air. I think the, um, I think the, uh, actually the sheath and the clip do weigh, way more than the knife. 
um, which may not be surprising for a knife for that size. But yeah, I think it's a, I think it's really cool. I love the concept of it. It it feels a little small to my hands, but I'm not used to it. And, and there are particular ways that you're supposed to hold it and use it. So I'm sure that's something I'll get used to over time, you know. But um, I just had to carry it and use it a little bit. I'm definitely going to run it across a ceramic rod and um, strop it just a little. See if that'll touch up the edge on there. Hopefully it will. Um, anyway, guys, if you liked the video, leave me a like down below. Comment, let me know what you think about the CRKT SDN, the Skein Do Neck. And uh, let me know what you think about that or any of CRKT's products or what you think about my red plaid shirt for this episode. I was trying to be sort of uh, Scottish looking for the uh, Skein Do. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching. I really do appreciate you. Remember what I always say, always be caring. And remember, the best gear is the gear you have on you. Oh, hey, you guys are still here. Listen, hey, thanks for watching all the way to the end. I, I appreciate you so much. Listen, if you made it this far in the video, you've got to be an OG. Um, if you really like the video on the SDN, be sure and leave a like down below. And, you know, if you're not subscribed, brother, I don't know what you're waiting for. Hit that subscribe button. Go ahead. I'll wait on you. Go, I'm going to get a sip of coffee. Go ahead. Hit that subscribe button down below. And I have to think if you're an OG, if you've made it this far in the video, are you a channel member? Are you a member of the channel? Because we do have channel memberships are up and available and they start as low as 99 cents. If you, if you want to help support the channel, help literally keep the uh, lights on. <laughs> I don't know if you've seen the videos, but I had a lot of problems with the ring light here. It's gone out uh, at least three times during this video. But uh, anyway, I really appreciate you hanging out with me and uh, hope you have a great one. Average Gear Reviewer, I'm out of here. Average Gear Review. But the best gear is the gear you have on you.